It's not impossible. It's not also very hard or very difficult. It's just you have to think in a little bit different way. You have to think of uh, of your future employer. You have to think from that mindset at what they're looking for. So hey guys, today we have with us Ms. Shweta Shivra. She is a data scientist and a business consultant in Germany, but her journey has been very unique. She started her career as a physicist, but later on she realized that I want to become a data scientist and she made her transition into that. And which is very, very unique because many people who are software engineers, they want to get into data science, but uh, they are not able to make that transition, but she could make that transition from physics to data science. So today we'll be discussing her journey and how she could make that successful transition. So hey, Shweta, welcome to the channel. Hey, Amit, thanks a lot for inviting me actually. And uh, yeah, it's as you described, um, I never really got such a fancy introduction about myself. So sounds good to hear. Um, yeah, so as um, you, you know already, um, I was, I am to some extent still a physicist by heart. Uh, I did my bachelor's and master's in uh, like more condensed matter physics, because of course physics is also a very broad term and it's not just related to astrophysics that most of the people know, but I was in the more, in the less known section. Uh, so yeah, I did my bachelor's from uh, University of Delhi then I decided to come to Germany because uh, it was just uh, pretty well known for experimental condensed, condensed matter physics. And um, once I came here, I had the opportunity to look for other avenues as well, which I was not aware of. So this kind of helped me think that, uh, well, I don't really need to stick in academia being in physics, I could actually explore other options in industry as well. Uh, the thing is that in India, we um, basically limit the people's uh, jobs more often to their um, profiles in which they're studying. So for example, if you're an engineer, more chances are that you would have a job in an engineering domain. Uh, be it like core engineering branches or just uh, computer science or IT. And if you're in the natural sciences, you often end up in academia. And that's what you're told that um, people don't really make a switch from um, sciences to the industry. Uh, I did not find this as rigid in Germany. And I would say that's why I decided to explore it a bit further. And um, yeah, so, well, I already had some experience of coding in my physics lectures. And of course, we were using a, a lot of statistics, um, not for like uh, the same way as an e economic student would use, but definitely uh, on a physical system. However, the, the idea or the goal was basically the same. And uh, these two things uh, and some of my other work experiences Helped me make to the, helped me to make this transition, and yeah, I'm sure that if anybody really wants to switch from natural sciences to the industry, it's it's just a threshold. It's an internal threshold that you have to cross, but it's not a very big thing. I mean, you can make this any time. It's yeah, yeah. That sounds very modest, uh, by the <laughs> way. So yeah, now I would like to know your trajectory because you gave a very wholesome idea about your profile, but uh, so you started with Delhi University, then in which university you went and which were the companies that gave you your first job and so on. So your, your trajectory till now, like just uh, let's get a, a quick uh, overview of that. Yeah, okay. So uh, I did my master's from University of Stutt Stuttgart in Germany. And um, also the program was in a, it, it was a joint program with Max Planck Institute of Solid State Research uh, over there. And once I finished, I did my internships uh, basically to better up my skills because I was not confident that I would, I should just switch directly uh, after my finishing up my master's because I wanted to explore before really making that change. 
and uh, then I um, I went for internships in Munich and LMU and uh, in yeah, uh, what is this University of Waterloo in Canada because at that time I was really fascinated by quantum computing and uh, after Canada I realized that academia is not for me so that's why I, I worked a bit in uh, TU Darmstadt as a researcher um, there I had my first experience with machine learning because they were using some machine learning models to uh, explain some questions in material science, basically. And then I applied for interviews and got my first job as a PI consultant uh, or a data expert, as they call it. So the title is just uh, not really very descriptive, but um, the idea is that in my current company, I'm doing all sorts of um, all the chains of uh, data visualization, data modeling, engineering, and data science as well at the end. So yeah, that was it. that's great. So you were doing your research internships and everything, yeah. and uh, all of a sudden, and all this research, I assume, were in physics or condensed matter physics and all the things that we hear in Big Bang Theory. So you you were doing uh, such stuff. So what was the point uh, when you realized that this is not what I want to do? My interest lies uh, more on the data science side or more on a job where I can play uh, with data. So when did that happen? Uh, so when I was doing my master thesis, um, of course, it was it was an experimental physics-based thesis, but also I was doing a lot of data visualization. So our job was to do the experiments, to gather the data, and to use like MATLAB and Python to perform data visualizations and like importing meaningful analysis out of those. And um, since this is pretty similar uh, to the field of data science, that's why I was interested in it. And also like I liked the use of statistics to uh, find future outcomes. Um, and this was pretty similar to what I was already doing as a physicist. So that's when I decided that, yeah, if I want to go into in, 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 a, in an industry, I would rather want to be as a data scientist. And um, regarding uh, switching to an industry, uh, that's because I decided that academia was really not the fit for me. Like it's a great place and it's very independent. They have a really nice culture, but it was just not for me. And yeah, since I'm already very happy uh, in the place where I am, so I thought that, yeah, it makes sense to switch. Yeah, so just making the decision of uh, making a switch, I don't think it's enough. You actually have to plan your career and that's what you had to do when you made such a path breaking decision. So what kind of planning did you do and uh, how did you like how did you plan out your uh, transition towards the uh, science data science or something in IT? Yeah, uh, you're right. Of course, it was not an overnight decision. It was uh, while I was doing my internships and not feeling very content when I would like just come back home and just always feeling like yeah, this is not really the place for me. And then I started looking for opportunities. I started to basically surf the web, like what things um, a physicist is, like uh, what career opportunities lies for a physicist. I also talked to my some of my colleagues who had done their PhDs and then went to the industry and they gave me a lot of helpful insights. They told me that, um, of course, if you can get a job after a PhD, you can definitely get it after a master's. And it's actually better after a master's because um, then uh, there's not much of a requirement. Um, there's a more wider selection, selection pool uh, for the industries and for you as well to choose the positions. Because for doctorates, there are somehow less positions uh, available in the industries. And, um, yeah, so yeah, I, I looked up the internet, I decided that, okay, these are the skills that I have, and like, these are the skills that I don't have. So maybe I should do an either an internship or take up some courses to like, uh, polish those skills. 
And uh, then I also um, research a, a lot of job advertisements because I wanted to see what these companies are basically looking for. If they want a physics graduate, what are the expectations? So a lot of uh, these answers I got from just randomly searching the different job advertisements who were looking for physics graduates. And that's how uh, like physics graduates, but working in data science. And I saw the correlation that a lot of companies who wanted a data scientist did have mentioned that, yeah, they want somebody from the mathematics or physics or like statistics background and then these uh, programming skills. So the foundation knowledge were basically statistics, which I already and mathematics, which I sort of had from my courses. But uh, for the coding part, I, um, I trained myself. And also I took up internships, which are specializing in that. Because at the end, it doesn't matter for the industry if you did machine learning on um, for physics or you did it in economics. It's like, if you know how to use machine learning for a certain system, it's fine enough for them. That's great. Uh, so when you said that you trained yourself in coding, uh, which language are you talking about? And what resources did you use for training yourself? So we have to use MATLAB uh, in our master thesis to do some image processing and uh, also to you uh, like um, basically analyze uh, highly pixelated data um, so for that I had to learn it on myself based on certain tutorial videos looking at scripts of other colleagues and then um, the, just doing the exercises and stuff on my own then uh, I had to learn Python uh, while I was working in Darmstadt. There I looked at all these uh, for this um, online uh, tutorial websites. I don't really know, like there's a lot of them available, like W3. Uh, and W3schools.com. Exactly, yeah. and lead code and like there are a bunch of them available for uh, free where you can you know, practice your coding. And then, of course, it also depends on what you're working on. So my current project also gave me a lot of possibilities to um, try out different things. So yeah, oh, that's great. So finally, uh, you prepared yourself, and you're all uh, all set to face interviews. Now, yeah. tell us what was the journey of facing interviews? Because it's not like you would have got the job in the very first attempt. You must have had multiple attempts in multiple companies. So tell us that journey. And uh, how did you also prepare your uh, profile and resume for that? Yeah, so I would say uh, the biggest learning experience for me uh, while making the transition uh, was actually interviews because there I got such good feedback from the people who were interviewing me and uh, realistic taste of uh, what they're exactly expecting from me. Uh, so I got, I guess, uh, I gave five interviews, four of them were rejections, and then the fifth one was my job. And, uh, in, and of course, there were a lot of other rejections, automatic ones, of course. Um, but uh, when I gave my interviews, uh, most of them were questions about, they asked me about my background. They asked me why I think I would be a good fit to their organization. And uh, that helped me prepare my story in a more concise manner. Because of course, throwing around words like, yeah, I was, I was in physics, but I was not interested. And now I want to join an industry that, that was not good enough. So I had to really show them that I had the skills and I was um, formulated enough that I could be doing the job for which they could easily get any other, let's say, computer science uh, graduate, right? So like I was competing with people who were, uh, who had this job as their core disciplines, like the skills used in this job as their core disciplines. So yeah. Um, from the uh, interviews, I I got really good feedback. I would say that even if they were rejections, they they did teach me a lot, and it also taught me a lot of other soft skills how to conduct yourself because it's different in in an academic setting. Like uh, somehow people are really 
uh, they behave diff differently when you're in a university or something, and then they behave really differently when you're in a company, for example. So yeah, most of the questions were about, uh, for especially data science positions, they were about statistics, finance, and the, the banks, they were very interested in knowing how much I knew about um, the general uh, banking business uh, of uh, how they were, what, what it, the things that they were doing. And uh, yeah, I think there was some uh, hardcore coding questions as well, also based on software development, like uh, for example, Docker's containers and other things that uh, prof maybe a professional software developer is aware of. But yeah, the, more or less uh, the technical side was the same. It was just how 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 you're presenting and how motivated you are that makes the difference. Yeah, that's uh, that's a very uh, nice story. Uh, belated congratulations, by the way, <laughs> for Thank getting you. your first job. And it's almost two years since you get that got that job, right? So yeah, yeah that's that's great. Now, uh, now you have two years of uh, industry experience, or it's, I would say professional experience. And before that, you had experience of academics. Now you okay. have experience of data sciences. Before you had experience of physics and material sciences. So it is a completely new world for you. So yeah. do you think are you do you think you are happier now, or you think you want to go back to that era and restart your physics journey from where you left off? Um, I would say I'm definitely much happier now. I think that I found the place where I wanted to be at the end. And uh, this sort of satisfaction, I was not really finding it when I was pursuing physics. So I would like to stick in. Uh, however, I would say that um, I see a lot of uh, big corporations uh, doing, especially their R&D divisions, using a lot of uh, physics-based uh, stuff in industry. For example, I know of a bank who was using, trying a lot of banks actually, who are trying to use quantum computing uh, in finance, which is very cool, I think. So definitely, I would also like to be part of uh, some of those projects, which could use my uh, physical knowledge. Uh, well, physical knowledge is not the right term. I mean, knowledge of the uh, knowledge of physics and uh, use it in industry. I, mean, I would be very, uh, it would be a re really nice opportunity, but yeah, for now, I think I'm happy where I am. Yeah, that's, that's uh, amazing to know. Now, final question. Uh, mm -hmm. What is your message for people who are looking to make a career transition, what they can learn from your story and what would you like to say them directly? Uh, I would like to say to all those people who are uh, thinking of making the switch but are really uncertain or scared if it's the right decision, if it's possible, just don't think too much about it. Uh, I would say that the only problem or the major roadblock could be your uncertainty. There are a lot of opportunities and it it really depends upon how much effort you put into and how much uh, research you're willing to make this switch. It's, it's not impossible. It's not also very hard or very difficult. It's just you have to think in a little bit different way. You have to think of, uh, of your future employer. You have to think from that mindset that what they're looking for. And yeah, if there are, of course, um, any questions or any queries, I would be very happy to answer them. Sure, sure, sure. So what I will do is I will also put your LinkedIn profile link in the description. And guys, if you have any questions, just post them in the comments and I and Shweta will be happy to respond to them. Also, if you found this video informative, please like the video, share it with your friends. Also comment and increase the engagement so that YouTube algorithm knows that this video is valuable for other people also. And uh, also please keep coming back to our channel week after week for giving us new ideas and watching our content. And until next time, peace. peace.